Hello and welcome to this InsureTech webinar. This is part of the InsureTech Rising Live Digital Week. I'm Paolo Cuomo, Principal at the Boston Consulting Group. We'll be live tweeting this webinar, so if you want to join in the conversation, please do so using the hashtag hash InsureTech Live. Every day this week, InsureTech Rising is taking on the biggest issues that are facing insurance, bringing you expert discussions via a series of interactive webinars, live Q&As, podcasts, and articles to shed light on the areas most ripe for disruption. So, today's session is entitled Getting Fit for the Future, Strategies for the Digital Insurer. And I'm delighted to be joined by two experts in this area. Moshe Tamir, Global Head of Digital Transformation at Generali, and Francoise Lamotte, SVP and Head of Direct and Digital at MetLife EMEA. So, welcome. Now, end-to-end -end digital, customer centricity, agile, responsiveness, these are all words that have entered our insurance language over the last year or so. Now, the end goal, of course, is towards all those things. But how do insurers get there? What role will InsurTech play in paving the way to the industry's digital future? We're going to explore some of the crucial elements of an effective digital strategy, the role of partnerships and how they help deliver results, the challenges that insurers face in this new world, and the way they can overcome them. Now, before getting stuck into the, the topic itself, I'd just like to remind you that we're holding an interactive Q&A, both during and, and after the initial questions. So if you have any questions, please do use the Ask a Question button at the bottom of the screen. It's obviously much safer doing it in this situation than if you're at a real in-person seminar, so we're looking forward to those sort of profound questions that you've always wanted to ask but never dared. So to kick things off, I'd like to ask Francoise a little bit about um, the, the vision of insurance that underpins the digital strategy. So, so Francoise, what is it that you see about how people will, will buy and sell insurance differently um, that, that underpins how you think about your digital strategy? Well, I, I think uh, in the insurance world uh, so far, I mean, the, there's been a lot of uh, changes and adaptation to digital, but not a major uh, disruption uh, so far. Uh, but I think it, it will come in, in the future. So I think the digital is going to cut across everything from risk to processes to distribution to customer interactions. Um, and that's, uh, that's why, you know, we, we are building a strategy uh, to be uh, ready and ahead of, of that change. Uh, at MetLife, uh, we, we have put digital and simplification at the heart of our strategy. And uh, this is really an enabler uh, to support uh, uh, the evolution and the success of our company. So we uh, leverage digital uh, to support uh, value proposition for our customers, uh, to uh, provide solutions for our distribution, and also uh, internally uh, to uh, upgrade and adapt our processes. Uh, so I think it's, it's a long journey. Uh, if I look Ten years ago, uh, digital was just at the beginning, and we have so much coming up, uh, you know, every day, every month, that we really need to be very broad and have a very open mind. Uh, but I think it's it's critical for us to uh, put digital at the core and make sure that uh, it's pervasive uh, across the organization. Excellent. Thank you. So digital at the, the core, at the heart of the strategy. Moshe, would you agree? Is, is that the same thinking at Generali, or are you coming at it from a, a different point of view? Yes. Uh, we also see that you know, the, the, the insurance sector is really on the verge of a, a revolution. Uh, the whole industry uh, probably has been lagging behind every other industry compared to the changes and the track, the, the, the digital movement. And for many, many years, the, the industry has been focused on building a very technical, sophisticated product, probably the product for the corner store of our business. Uh, but the more complex and sophisticated our products became, the harder it was for our customers to understand them. Uh, we really believe that in the future, insurance companies and generally as well will have to focus much more on relationship. Uh, regaining trust and building engagement, and we see digital in the core of uh, of doing that. And we look at that in three uh, main uh, verticals. The first vertical is the transformation of the core. So, for example, Generali has 
over 50 million customers. We have more than 150,000 insurance agents, uh, which we build over the last 186 years, and we need to help them transform the way they are interacting and also leverage on these assets. This is the core. Uh, on top of that, we see the other area, which is reinventing uh, and building the new businesses, uh, which in some cases, in some markets, in some territories, could also be uh, some sort of competitive to the traditional one, but we need to start and look at those opportunities and build them from scratch. Uh, and the third pillar, I think I completely agree with uh, Francois, is the fact that you cannot do it uh, without a significant mindset shift, uh, internal cultural shift. So in general, we are operating in many, many countries, and that's a huge opportunity to gain more and more different cultures uh, and different sharing and drive the transformation uh, by collaborating. Okay. Um, thank you. Now, that, that, uh, that totally makes sense. I guess the, the question a lot of people have is how does, how does this transformation genuinely change the business rather than simply in the first place digitizing exact, uh, existing activities and processes? And moreover, how do you persuade people in the organization that this isn't just about doing things a, a bit faster, a bit quicker, a bit more accurate? So, so Francois, what's the, what's the discussion with the, the business unit heads, with the executive team about why this is more than just a, an efficiency game, that, that this is actually fundamentally a transformation? How do you engage people on that, that topic? Well, I think now we, we we have passed the point where you know people said you know the, yeah this is a nice to have. I think everybody in the organization is convinced uh, that uh, this is critical and and we need to move fast. So I think this is not so much a hurdle. I think what is more important for uh, the people uh, in the function is to understand how is this going to affect me, how is this going to change my my, my job, and. Uh, I had uh, you know discussions with some people uh, early this week uh, saying that uh, if I could do everything online if the customers can avoid to uh, sign on paper this would make my life so much easier so I think the the change is embraced as long as we you know can explain it well uh so what what we have done uh, at MetLife is uh, we we have uh, created the role of digital champions in every market and those people, uh, they come from different functions. It can be marketing, can be IT, can be ops, can be distribution. And their role is really to be the evangelist and to put everybody around the table because I think we need to move from a silo view to really a customer-centric and co coherent customer journey. So I think that's the main shift for me. It's, it's less uh, working function by function and everyone on its own uh, process rather than uh, now becoming uh, really uh, customer-centric with thinking about the journey end-to-end -end and making sure that there is a fluidity and coherence uh, across across the business. So that's how we are approaching uh, things uh, internally. So, so that makes a lot of sense, thinking about the end-to-end the -end journey. I guess the challenge for for people who are having to do this in their organizations is while someone needs to think end-to-end, -end, the actual changes is, is happening in each of the specific specific areas. So, Moshe, how are you, for example, within a risk management function or within an underwriting function or within claims, how are you actually getting the people who know those areas well to combine with people who understand the potential of digital to work together to, to come up with the, the right answer for the new world? What, what sort of processes are you using? So I think, uh, you know, the fact that technology is changing uh, and cultural changes are happening are thing that most of the senior management probably in insurance and financial services understand it. Probably a few years ago we had to invest a lot in convincing them that it's happening. Now people understand that, at least in general we do. I think that the, the thing that which is still not clear to all is that not it's not really about the technology per se. It's about what technology allows you to do. Uh, and usually when when you look at all over, when disruptive technologies appear, there is a lot of uncertainty in the transition from the old to the new. And I think the challenge is not really about developing new technology or investment because, you know, 
we have the money, we have the capital. Traditionally, financial services do have the capital, so it's not about putting more money to invest in technology. It's really about shifting the business model in terms of the way you start to create and capture value. So back to, to the point of how you engage the stakeholders that are not in the core value chain of the front end to bring them to the front end, the num one of the things that we do very uh, massively in general is using design thinking or design doing in uh, working cross-functionally to build new experiences. So, for example, we just launched last week um, in France our first mobile hub experience when customers can start and interact on their mobile with us. The way we build it, the way we structure it was in a very agile way, cross-functionally. So imagine the head of claims, the head of uh, operations, the head of marketing, the head of distribution, now rethinking the future customer experience on mobile, but not in a theoretical exercise. What does it mean when you want to introduce a new service to this client? So I think this helps them really to move from the theoretical exercise to the pragmatic exercise. And mobile and mobile experience, when you have to put finally everything on one screen, makes everyone behind the scene much more customer-centric in reality. Good. Okay. So, yeah, so that's around the, the role of digital then uh, approach to digital strategy. Let, let's move on then to the, the key question of how much does, does one do internally versus partner, be it with a, an sort of incumbent supplier or versus a, a startup or whatever. So, um, Francois, what, what do you see the, the impact of these so-called insure tech companies, these startups that are, are going to, you know, allegedly disrupt the whole market? Do you see these as an opportunity? Do you see them as a threat? Well, I think um, what I've seen so far in uh, the insure tech world is uh, uh, most of the, the startups are really focusing on some pieces of the value chain. You are going to find uh, startups uh, working on data analytics. You are going to find startups working on customer interface and how to use uh, artificial intelligence and, and chatbots uh, to explain a product. So you, you see a lot of uh, uh, really interesting value add uh, to certain pieces of the value chain rather than, uh, I mean, we haven't seen today Google or Facebook uh, coming with a new model for insurance. So I think uh, for, for, for us, it's, it's a very rich environment and there are a lot of opportunities to build partnerships. So I, I see it more like an opportunity than, than a threat. And, and uh, uh, as you said, uh, there is so much that we need to transform internally to our core systems and, and our processes that uh, we really welcome the energy and the ideas of InsureTech to help us accelerate and embed uh, their developments into our uh, customer journey. Uh, so we are we are really engaging in in that uh, with that approach that uh, it's not so much a threat that an opportunity. Um, as as large companies, we have a very good brand. Usually, we have large customer data, we have capital, we have distribution. So we have a lot of the assets uh, that the st startups are looking for. So it's, it's really uh, an opportunity to bring uh, win-win partnerships and uh, develop uh, better customer experience, uh, better products, et cetera, together. So I, I see it really as, as a very uh, interesting and complementary uh, synergy for, for, uh, for the future. So yes, it's sort of a, a win-win complementary. These, these words all resonate with what we're, we're hearing around the market. Um, the, the question, I guess, for people who are maybe a, a step behind MetLife or Generali is, you know, where do they start looking? So, so I, I wonder, Moshe, do you take the approach of let's look at the value chain and let's look at which areas we would want to help, or do you go and look at the, the tens or hundreds of startups that are starting to appear and look at which ones? look interesting and then work out how to, to slot them in as partners. Which, which way are you coming at it? So when you, re, when you analyze the situation in the insurance tech space, most of the startups are enabling existing insurers to harness technology. I believe that from the companies that I've met, that I've seen, that I've had the opportunity to review in different occasions, I think 90 to 95% 
are really enablers for our for our journey. So, and from an incubium, from from a large insurer perspective, I think that effective cooperation with these startups may be may be the only way, or probably one of the best way, for the insurance to fend any potential competitions from newcomers that are coming, probably not from the insure tech, but from other spaces. Uh, but it, uh, some of the large insurance really have to recognize the potential of that technology, but also to understand our limitations uh, as a company, limitations which are sometimes related to technology, but also sometimes related to cultures. Uh, and when insurance companies will become more self-aware of both those defensible strengths and core competence, uh, we will then be able to to understand the value that these partnerships bring to us. Uh, personally and in general, we strongly believe that the most successful companies in the future will be the ones that understand that and ready to partner uh, with the right digital native companies and actually leverage their expertise, not only technology, but also culturally, uh, to redesign our client experience. So. Uh, this is where uh, we can really optimize the value chain. In, in general, in, in different occasions, we either partner, uh, but in some cases, we, we, we take a more active role uh, in buying. For example, Generali, uh, two years ago, bought a company called MyDrive, which is a UK-based startup focusing on data analytics and uh, driving behavioral, uh, to really use them as our core uh, capability to, to, to scale up the old data analytics and driving uh, profiling in the group. Uh, so that, that's, that's the challenge. But traditionally, uh, the whole industry has been for many, many years focusing inside out rather than outside in. It was, so it's a big challenge to move from what you can call it ego system to a real ecosystem. That's, I think, the biggest challenge that we need to transform in our industry. So, so I like that. We need to move from, from ecosystem to, to ecosystem. The, um, the, the culture question is an important part of that. So uh, Francois, I don't know if you've got any examples of, of how you avoid whether you're partnering with a sort of a five-person startup or maybe you've acquired a 10-person business, but how you avoid suffocating them in the inevitable sort of corporate bureaucracy that, that every large company has. Uh, yeah. Do you have to physically sit them separately? Do you have to run them in a different way? Or, or what's the approach to, to making sure that these partnerships uh, work from that point of view? Well, I, I think um, to, to your earlier point, uh, when we work with startups, it's really because we have uh, found a, a synergy and opportunity, and it's uh, answering one of our requirements. So when, when we engage with startups, it's because we have expressed what MetLife needs, what are the issues we need to solve, and, and we are looking for that uh, capability or that solution. So there is uh, already a natural fit. Um, and, and then, uh, I mean, let's face it, you know, we, we have uh, due diligence processes, we have, uh, you know, we are large companies and we need to follow the process. But I think uh, the, the main point is uh, to build the business case uh, and, and show the value. And I think, uh, you know, we, we are very much uh, interested in uh, uh, moving on and creating more value. So uh, as long as we can prove that, uh, I think we, you know, we are able to, to move along and, and, and work uh, together. Um, at the moment, uh, our approach is more about partnership rather than uh, uh, incubating or hosting, uh, you know, startups within uh, our uh, traditional business. Okay, thank you. And we, we've had a question that that relates to sort of the legal and regulatory side. So I think maybe if if both you answer this would be be good. Starting with Moshe, which is. Um, if, if these startups that you're working with partnership are coming up with a very different way of, of underwriting, whether they're using artificial intelligence to price or, or sort of maybe taking a different approach to risk selection or something, how are you going about balancing the, the desire to move fast with the necessity of understanding the legal implications and checking that the regulator's happy with what you're doing? Moshe, do you have a view? Yes. Uh... I think 
the more from my experience in the last couple of years working on with, with this technology of startups and partnering with them in the in general in the different market, what I learned that the reality is stronger than than any PowerPoint presentation. So when you do have the case and you start to break it into pieces and the team and the markets are really passionate to make it happen, then the the, the push coming from the startup, the speed the ability to quickly visualize uh, opportunities really help us in this transformation. So let me give you just one or two examples just to translate it to real life. So when you launch a new platform and you start to deal with all data privacy issues, digital, collecting information, so in a theoretical, classical corporate environment, you come into a meeting, you start to discuss, there are two options, and then you meet again in another two weeks, you review the two options, and then another after two weeks, you analyze the option, and after two weeks, you said, no, we cannot decide by ourselves. We have to go to our legal department. In a real partnership with a startup with very agile methodology, you come to the first meeting, you identify the two options. Two days later, you get A-B testing for the two options. Legal people can visualize everything. They can say, okay, you have to change here, here, and there. This is have to go there. And then after one week, you you get, you get it done if it's possible. You don't jump on every, any kind of legal constraint or you don't jump on any compliance need, but the pace, especially with the power to visualize and bring things to reality very, very quickly, driven by the agility of the startups, really help us as large corporates to, to drive quickly the uh, decision-making and processes. So I, finally, I don't think we jump on any kind of legal or compliance need we just do it much more faster, quicker, driven by the cultural agility and technology capability to visualize options. Thank you. Francois, have you got anything to add to, to what Moshe said, or do you have a similar approach? Yes, I, I would say, I mean, we were talking about underwriting, for example. I think, uh, you know, there is a lot we can do within the existing framework. So, um, you know, we we don't need to change our risk appetite, for example, but uh, there are, you know, as you said, data analytics, artificial intelligence, et cetera, that can really make the underwriting process much faster, much better, but still within the uh, the current framework. So not everything is a, is a legal challenge. <laughs> I think there is a lot we can do uh, within what we have already established. So... Uh, Again, as, as Moshe mentioned, I don't think this is the this is the biggest challenge. Okay, thank you. So maybe maybe this is the biggest challenge. We've had a question that it effectively says, yeah, great that insurers are starting to embrace digital and doing all the type of things you're talking about, but in reality, you're never going to have a true richness of, of data around your customers. You're never really going to have um, a regular relationship with them. So what's stopping the, the likes of, and you know, cliched examples, but the likes of Amazon or BMW building a, a, using the relationship they already have, combining it with some, some access to capital and effectively offering a, uh, an insurance proposition that means that no one needs to go to a primary insurer anymore? Uh, Moshe, do you want to start with the response to that? You start. You give me to start with the more with the most difficult question so far. You're not first. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's uh, a yeah. ten billion dollar question. Yeah. So I, I think in most of the markets, maybe with the exception of UK and one or two Asian countries, still one of the dominant channels of distribution of insurance product is the insurance agent, the physical person. Uh, and now there are a lot of discussion about the role of those people in the future, their impact, uh, and I think that's still an asset uh, that the insurance, traditional insurance company can really leverage, uh, and with all the respect to, to the big giants uh, in the pure digital space, as an example, Amazon as well, which just bought a physical chain and network, uh, the, the ability to combine physical and digital channels in a very, very smart way leveraging AI and, and, and data analytics is still a significant advantage of, of traditional uh, insurance companies. Uh, again, keep in mind that not all the insurance products are, you know, products that you wake up in the morning and says, wow, today I really need to buy a good long-term health insurance product. Where do I find it? And, okay, you go to Amazon, you buy. You need, there's a lot of advice, a lot of services around the product. Again, traditionally, they have not changed 
so much, so insurance companies really need to help uh, this transformation happen. With, but this is an asset that exists there. Uh, I, I don't think the intention of insurance company will be to be the Amazon in terms of client experience, in terms of, or they will be able, let's say they may want, but I'm not sure they will be able to do it. And this is where the right partnership with companies, insure tech, tech companies that are really, that's their core asset, could be very interesting because traditional insurance company will bring the network, the brand, the already acquired customer that are already in the portfolio, and the combination with this additional digital layer could be a differentiator for the traditional ones versus the pure new digital players. Thank you, Francois. Anything to add? Yes, I think uh, to to your, your question, I think on one side, uh, uh, insurance is still a very regulated industry where you have to put up a lot of capital and and follow a lot of rules. I'm not sure that at the moment, uh, you know, the the, the big uh, data owners like the Google, the Facebook have an appetite to become a risk carrier and be a regulated uh, insurance uh, company. Uh, so this is a bit of a protection uh, so far. Uh, but uh, to the point that, you know, uh, uh, the, the question was, uh, you will never have uh, as much data as those uh, players. Uh, yes, yes, in a way, but no, in, a, in another way. We are really now engaging with our customers to have much more interaction, to be able to be more uh, in the heart of their day-to-day -day lives. And, uh, uh, you know, we talk about uh, uh, connected cars. We talk about uh, health trackers. So I think we, we, we are moving in a different uh, uh, space where um, the insurance uh, company is less, uh, you know, one time per year interaction where you get the bill to uh, much more uh, frequent uh, relationship, uh, almost a day to day if uh, you can engage around uh, health, for example, and uh, behaviors. And this is related to, uh, you know, the, the product you, you are buying or the premium you are paying. So there are a, a lot of ways today, thanks to technology, thanks to uh, mobile, etc., to be much closer to the customer and uh, uh, collect much more data. Maybe not to the extent of what uh, Google or Amazon will have, but good enough to be more uh, close to the customer and more in the heart of their of their lives. Good, thank you. So, um, just time for a couple more questions. There's, um there's been some interesting ones asked about, you know, what, what people should be doing tomorrow, so to speak, after hearing the thoughts today. So I wonder if you could each answer to two questions on that side. One is, from a, from a company point of view, if, if the company's really looking to embrace digital and sort of hasn't got going yet, what should they do first? Should they sort of look at their culture? Should they define a strategy? Should they find some, some money to start investments? And then as individuals, if, if, if someone's sitting in an organization saying, okay, I want to understand this whole digital thing better and, and what it means for my industry and my job, what would you suggest they do? So, um, Moshe, do you want to cover those, those two questions? What, what should a company do first and what should an individual do? So, on, on the company side, um, I think the big challenge is the combination of building the strategy and doing the strategy in parallel. Uh, I think the, the, the world has shifted so rapidly over the last year that sometimes the time it takes to plan will be longer than the time it takes to build in the digital space. So I strongly believe that you need to combine the two methods. Uh, on one hand, you know, have a much strategic plan on your digital transformation divided into two pieces, one transforming the core and the other one building the new. But while you are doing that, start... Uh, to do and start doing is going into the existing customer journeys, the way we are interacting with our clients and build the to-be customer journey when you're leveraging digital, probably mainly mobile experiences. That's really helped not only in starting to build new client experiences, but it's also helped to bring the organization together to understand what are the opportunities but to really understand it's not anymore this department over there in the marketing or in the digital team or somewhere that's responsible. They are just facilitating us 
to redesign the processes. And the only way to do it in reality is to start to deal with real core insurance activities. This is, I would say, the right, com from my experience, a good combination, on, especially on large groups, big companies that still needs to be transformed, but you, you want to move from strategy to reality. The second one on, on a people level, I think it's very, very much depends on where you are and what your, your ambition, uh, and whether you are in a role that you need to drive more or make sure that your team is, is aligned, but probably you have to spend time on that uh, because things are really moving and changing and start to experience more and more what does it mean in general and specifically into my uh, my business unit or myself as, a, as an employee if I'm in the company. If, I, if, I'm an, if I'm outside of the company and I'm rethinking the future of, of myself or really want to see where I want to, to create the next uh, impact, then try to really put yourself on a customer experience shoes and see what are the pain points. Some of them are not very complex and how technology can help really remove some of those pain points. It's not very, very complex in our industry. No, that's, that's a very good point. So, um, Francois, do you want to sort of add to that to, to wrap up the, the thoughts for the audience? Yeah, I, th I think um, uh, the, the people side is extremely important, and it has to go from top to bottom and bottom to top. So I think it's really about engaging the entire organization. And, of course, the leaders have to be very vocal about digital, and embark the rest of uh, the organization. And um, as Moshe said, I think um, we need also to show quick wins. So, uh, you know, don't overspend on the strategy, but uh, there are so many opportunities to make a difference with the existing business that uh, you can really implement things that are visible. And then the, the point is about communicating and showing everyone that uh, we are progressing in the journey. Excellent. Thank you. Well, that's all we have time, I'm afraid. Um, it, there's, there's still questions rushing in, which clearly sort of indicates the, um, the enthusiasm for people to understand more about this topic, and I think it's going to be a, an exciting few years to come. So firstly, I'd like to, to, thank, thank, to thank Francois and, and Moshe for joining us um, and sharing their, their insights and their experiences. Also, just want to, to remind people of the context of this webinar, which is that on the 16th to 18th of October, these discussions will be continuing at the InsureTech Rising Conference happening at the Business Design Center in London. And um, apparently, if you don't have your ticket already, they're available still for a reduced price till, till the end of this week, until the to Friday the 23rd of June. And there's a further 10% off using the code InsureTech Rising Live. That's InsureTech Rising Live, or one word. So um, look forward to seeing those of you who can make that um, at the event. It's Europe's largest and most senior gathering that's talking about the insure tech topic. And um, certainly as BCG, we're very pleased to be involved and we'll look forward to sharing some of our thoughts on what's happening in the industry. So I hope that's been useful. And if you have any feedback uh, or future recommendations, please do complete the survey that will appear on your screen shortly. Thank you and goodbye.